Hello, this is Darren Ike, and Fridays were a big day at Preston Fountain Elementary School when I was growing up because we would get the weekly reader, and in there I could order my Choose Your Own Adventure books, my favorite kind of book. And now you can choose your own adventure. What presentation would you like for me to do for you today? This one, this one in blue here, or would you like choice B, this one? All right, let me guess you want choice B because every time I've asked people this, they always choose this visual one. So today my goal is to teach you how to develop some ideas and communicate those ideas and essentially innovate. So here are some tips that I have for being able to do this. First, I want to show you what's under the hood in the engine while we're driving the car. How do we communicate ideas? Well, first, you've seen visually, right? visuals. You'd rather see the visuals than the text. So the acronym I also use is Simple Sam V. Keep it simple. Stories, analogies, metaphors, visuals. I'll be telling you stories and sharing with you metaphors during this time period. And I also think if you have an idea to share, make sure you keep on the roots and the dirt so people can see where it's coming from. Well, where is this material coming from? Well, 2004, I met a, another student here at UW at a leadership retreat I was facilitating. The student's name was Anand Chatpar. And we started this organization called Brain Reactions, where we recruited the most creative students from UW, taught them how to brainstorm, generate ideas, innovate, and then facilitated innovation sessions with them to invent products, create new ways of communicating, help other organizations innovate, like Procter & Gamble in the United Nations. Then we created something else called Innovation Trip, where we brought executives from India, Colombia, Mexico, developing countries, to the U.S., to Harvard, to MIT. Then we flew them to Silicon Valley, brought them to Stanford, to IDEO, to show them the best of American innovation. It was like an innovation road trip. So during these experiences, what we want to do is be able to teach people how to generate better ideas, more ideas, better ideas, breakthrough ideas, ideas more like the iPod, right? A breakthrough idea compared to the CD, its predecessor. But that was a breakthrough compared to a cassette tape. So, well, how do we do this? We first try to generate a lot of ideas, quite simply. When I was in middle school, I wanted to be cool, right? So you could identify with something like this. This is almost like something you could find in a middle school cafeteria. Somebody brainstorming ways to be cool, and they have a whole list of, wow, more than 20 ideas here. So just like that student in middle school brainstorming ways to be cool, we can generate a lot of ideas for our challenge. But here are some tips I have for generating ideas. Number one, capture all of your ideas. Number two, go for a high quantity of ideas. Number three, lots of questions. Four, don't judge your ideas. And five, use tools. And here are some tools. Tools are like looking at your question or your challenge through different lenses. It's like a Swiss Army knife. You're using your mind in different ways to generate ideas. And we teach all kinds of different tools and techniques and facilitate them. Because whenever we use a tool, we'll get ideas. Whenever we ask a new question, we'll get ideas. And this helps us come up with a large quantity. So well, what do we do then? How do we analyze these ideas? Well, take a look at this thing. Anybody know what this is? When I was growing up in Preston, Minnesota, one day we went to uh, Forestville State Park for a field trip. And the park ranger said, if anybody can find a gray ball in the woods, I'll give you a quarter. And we're like, gray ball? We went into the woods, and sure enough, I was the one that found this gray ball. I ran, brought it to the park ranger, and he said, does anybody know what this is? And we said, no. He said, this was a mouse. But an owl found the mouse, and the owl caught the mouse and ate the mouse. And the way that an owl eats a mouse is it takes the whole mouse in. And the owl will keep whatever it needs into its body, that nice meat. And it'll spit out everything the owl doesn't need in a ball of gray fur and bones, right? That's how you analyze ideas, like the owl. You may come up with a large list of them, but what you want to do is take them all in and spit out the ideas you don't need. Because if you want a breakthrough idea, otherwise known as a disruptive innovation, like this LASIK eye surgery, the ideas are made, right? They're a combination of all kinds of raw ideas. They're a new concept. Maybe they're a new iteration in an idea. But to be able to get to that point, you need to have a lot of ideas, right? One day I was also coming back from Preston, Minnesota to Madison and I took up trout fishing and I stopped at a creek in a small town known as Boaz. And wouldn't you know, I caught more trout than I ever had in my life. I caught three trout. 
And as I was catching these trout, I couldn't wait to actually leave the creek and Google this town that I was in because it seemed like the trout capital of the world. But all I found when I Googled this town of Boaz was the Boaz Mastodon right turns out in 1897 some farm boys and boaz came to the creek after a rain to see if the fence was still there but instead they found a mastodon skeleton and next to the mastodon skeleton was a spearhead and that's now at the uw geology museum but i thought to myself wow that sounds like my career it sounds like innovating mastodon hunting sometimes a mastodon chase you other times you're out in the wilderness by yourself for days not seeing any mastodon other times you see a bunch but the important thing about mastodon hunting is a mastodon is valuable if you can get one you have meat you can cook by the fire for yourself your family your whole community you have some fur you can make into a coat and you have a great story to tell around that campfire but sometimes you wonder have all the mastodon left should I just sit here and create a plot of farmland and just grow this corn and give up on the mastodon hunting, give up on the big innovations, or should I go after this, knowing that the mastodon is such a valuable innovation? Well, one thing that I realized then, after watching the movie 10,000 BC, is that mastodon hunting is not something you do by yourself. You do it with a tribe, and that's just like innovating. To be able to do it on a sustainable basis where we keep innovating, keep improving, keep adjusting to this change that's happening, responding to it and driving it, we need to go out with others hunting these mastodon, other people at our university, and knowing that it's worth it because we'll have the story to tell at the campfire.